in the time of temptations to help us to understand his will to help us to fulfill his plan so whose are you do you belong to him are you his disciple or maybe you don't feel like his strong and loyal disciple you just feel like I'm a simple believer are you a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father well are you unbeliever you have to know whoever you are Jesus Christ prayed for you hallelujah he prayed for you right after he acknowledged and gave all the disciples to know that he has finished his work he started to pray for you and me inclusive prayer hallelujah that's what we read in this holy scripture you know in matthew 22nd chapter we read wonderful portion of scripture uh, the Pharisees came to jesus christ and they tried to entangle, entangle him in his talk and they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians saying teacher we know that you are true and teach the way of God and truth nor do you care about anyone for you do not regard the person of man tell us therefore what do you think is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. You remember what happened, right? He just took that little coin and asked, Whose portrait is on, on, on this coin? And they said, It's Caesar's. So he told them, Well, if it's his image then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the, the things that are God's and uh, those people who tried to trap him when they heard these words they marveled and left him and went their way you know our Lord was praying for his particular 11 disciples those that he has chosen before he was also praying for all the believers because he said father they are yours and uh, I would like to ask this question and let's just take it to our mind and hearts what things in your life belong to God or what things in your life you can truly name they are yours father maybe you come up with a different answer and we so often say that our lives are given to you Jesus we, we, we dedicate to him every blessing we, we say that our home is open for your spirit we uh, drive the car and we say that this car belongs to him and we ask his protection on the roads <laughs> that's good we can say that our business belong to him and we do the business just for for his sake to bless to bring glory to to his name when we can share uh, with uh, all those that are needy finances and, and support as the early church was doing we can say that our plans and the, the future belongs to him it's really God's but what we see here in this short but at the same time the longest prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ he considered not anything else but them his disciples 
to be his. So my question is, do you have that person in your life that you pray for and that you consider to be his? Are there 11 close friends in your life that you share the word of God with, that you share your life with, that you share all the spiritual and physical blessings with, and just share friendship with, and you pray for them, because you know they are His? Is there the family member that you pray for constantly just because of the fact that you consider your mom or her dad that maybe even doesn't know the Lord to be His? Jesus said that these disciples and all the believers that will come to Him through their message are His. He was not thinking about this physical, material world. You are precious to Him. Those that you love, your beloved, are loved by Him. Those that you love, He is expecting that we will be praying for them. Let's learn to do it from Jesus Christ. I pray for them, for they are yours. Caesar's things will go to Caesar. But there are some things that belong to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and His wonderful name. So, let's see in this wonderful example of Jesus Christ continue to bring in our prayers those family members to the Lord Jesus Christ, brother and sister, business partner, I don't know, playfellow, maybe classmate, your new girlfriend, bring them to Him. And remember, he is, His heart is for them. And they are His. The second little characteristic and powerful message that we receive from his prayer. Jesus said, I pray for them, for they are yours, and I pray for their protection. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. You know, there is lots of different measures that uh, can be used for protection. But when we go to God, we are asking for the supernatural protection. Because God is the one who can change the circumstances in our life and protect through that. God is the one who can uh, stop the real danger just rushing at us and protect by that. God is the one who can uh, make the special miracle in your life and protect your life. But most of all, God is the one who protects us through our spiritual perception of Him. We have to be in contact with our God. And it's daily that we need to be protected. It's the daily fellowship with the Lord. And, you know, I heard such a story about the American National Park the big one and some hikers group came to that beautiful park and uh, they were taken to their route by the local ranger you know that ranger was the brave guy and he knew so much he just wanted to share all the blessings he knew about that park about those flowers about those birds about those animals and that live there and and he was just speaking and once in a while he was, his, his, his uh, 